Well, the other story, of course, uh, and I shared much uh, today of uh, Kate McNamara from the Herald's piece on uh, Nanaya Mahuta. And, well, I'm sorry, the fact that she's just lied, lied to the media about her involvement in the appointment of her niece uh, to an advisory position on the working group that wrote the Hapuapua report. Uh, she declared of conflict of interest, but she did nothing about it, and she lied to journalists about who made the appointment. It is clear from the Official Information Act releases she made the appointment. She chose her niece, not government officials. So that was a lie, an out-and-out -out lie, and we stuck it on Brendan O'Neill from Spike. We said, without saying who it was, we said, if that was a British Cabinet Minister, he said, well, that'd be front-page news, it'd be resignation material. Um, so what's happening here? Well, it would appear bugger all, but I'll tell you one uh, politician keeping an eye on it is Simeon Brown, uh, National MP for Pakuranga, and Simeon Brown uh, has written letters that do have an official inquiry into Naya Mahuta and her family appointments underway now. He joins us uh, on the line. Simeon, welcome to the programme. Good to have you back. Good to be back, Sean. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, firstly, that official inquiry by the Public Service Commission, where is that? What's the latest you've heard from them? Look, no, no news at this stage. Uh, they're still undergoing their looking into uh, what went uh, wrong with those four contracts. Um, with Nanaya Mahuta's um, uh, family members uh, or her husband's business. Um, so I haven't heard anything more on that, but I imagine I'll probably get uh, probably come back on a Friday afternoon at some point. <laughs> well, Simeon, look, this latest I'm story, and I must guy. say, Graham Adam did an excellent piece on the platform for us about smoking guns, and I think Kate McNamara's piece is good. There is just no way you can read the official information that's been released and not see there was a conflict of interest here. The way it was dealt with was that it wasn't really dealt with. It was highly questionable. But more importantly, the minister has been, let's say, disingenuous about her involvement in all this. She tried to fob off her niece's appointment onto officials when it is quite clear that she was the person who picked her. Look, I think that's, um, that's exactly right. And I think Kate's, point, Kate's article highlights that point very clearly from the official information that you request, which shows uh, that the Naima Huda was the person who took her niece's appointment to the Cabinet Honours uh, and Appointments Committee, uh, and that um, there's a range of questions around whether she followed the uh, Cabinet manual around declaring a conflict of interest and the process that is required to do that. So when she appointed her sister to the uh, Maori Advisory Group for the Water, Three Waters, um, she, in that instance, she stood down for that and put appointment. Kelvin and Davis, appointment and it was, yeah, it was quite Kelvin artful. Kelvin Davis, who then put it through for her. In this instance, she put her own niece's appointment through herself, which I think raises a range of serious questions because the Cabinet manual is very clear around how these processes are meant to happen where there is a conflict of interest. The other point is there's a, there's a letter in these uh, documents where she is effectively uh, writing to her niece saying, I am appointing you to this position. Yes, which we intend to publish. Oh. Yeah, we intend to publish that. It's all right. It's, hey, congratulations, uh, uh, niece. I got you the job. That's basically what the letter says. Well, that's right. And the re so, the, so there's a range of questions. We have lodged a range of questions last week around these particular points, around the process, whether she followed the Cabinet manual processes, whether she made the declaration of a conflict to the Prime Minister or to the Cabinet office. It has to be made in writing. We've asked where that is and what she did to make sure that actually the process was followed. I'm, I'm, you know, until I get the answers back, not sure. But, um, you know, from her statements, she said she had nothing to do with it. The, uh, the documents say otherwise. Well, she's lied. She's lied, uh, Simeon. The question is, what can we expect to be done about this? Well, ultimately, the Prime Minister is the person who's responsible for the Cabinet manual. Uh, and so ultimately, it's a question of political judgment for the Prime Minister. Does she want to hold her ministers to some level of accountability? Or is she going to let this slide? Uh, and in my view, um, if she lets this slide, that, that, that falls on her. She's ultimately responsible. But, you know, this is a government which is, you know, wanting to steer very clear of any discussion around this issue. They'll play the race card whenever they can to try to uh, divert attention from it. But the facts are very clear. We have had a situation 
where there is an appointment process, which I think is very questionable. There is four contracts given to Nanaya Mahuta's husband's firm, where she, three of which she was the associate minister at the time. The Public Service Commission is looking into that. These are, these are serious questions, and they come to the core of, is our public service neutral, politically neutral, uh, and is that is and, and are our ministers operating in accordance with the cabinet manual, which is designed to ensure that neutrality happens, and that that, that there is uh, there is no benefit provided to family members of ministers of the crown, so we don't end up going down that track, which so many other countries do. This is incredibly important issues for New Zealanders, and um, the prime minister should try to think she answer some questions about it. Mm. I'd be. I'd also quite like to see this story uh, make some headlines on One News Radio New Zealand. New sub, it doesn't seem to be. Well, other than when uh, we got the Public Service Commission to actually uh, look into it, uh, that was the only time when there's actually been sort of serious uh, intervention by other media. But, um, but you know, other than your platform and Kate uh, McMurray of the Herald, who has been, I think, a, you know, a, a yeah. diligent reporter on these issues. Yeah, she's done some great stuff um, on it. The reality is, um, you know, these are serious. And, and you just put the, boot, the shoe on the other foot. If this was a National Party minister... Yeah. doing what uh, what uh, Nanaya Mahuta had done. This would go on for weeks and weeks and weeks yeah. and weeks by the media yeah. uh, and by the and by the uh, Labour Party. They would not let go until they got what they wanted. And so, you know, we have to continue to answer the, ask the questions. But ultimately, as I said, the Prime Minister is responsible for the Cabinet Manual. She is the sole judge as to whether it has been followed or not. Uh, and so she has to be directly answerable for that. Couldn't agree more. Simeon, I thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, this morning and your work on this issue. That is Simeon Brown, National MP for Pakaranga. Yeah, come on, Prime Minister, you got a bit of time on your hands. You're not down on the ice today. Uh, but the ice, I would suggest, the ice is where you should put Nanaya Mahuta until we have a clearer idea of what's happened. Well, actually, it's getting pretty clear. It's bent as, isn't it? Crooked, corrupt, nepotism, isn't it? But if that's OK with you. If that's okay with this Labour administration, I guess it says something about them. And if it's okay with you or the electorate, I guess that says something around about New Zealand as well. In my mind, something rather disappointing.